Hey guys, it's Chris with Better Editor, and today my hot take is that you should be editing with proxies. Whoa, 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 Chris. Proxies take way too long. And my computer, it's a beast. Hmm, don't care. Editing with proxies will almost always save you time in the long run, even if you're editing on whatever this thing is. So I'm gonna tell you why. But first, what are proxies? <laughs> Proxies are smaller copies of your high-resolution source footage. They usually have smaller frame sizes and bit rates, making their file sizes smaller too. The best proxies also use a quality editing codec, like the IntraFrame codec ProRes Proxy, or an equivalent. Which brings me to this. H.264 video files aren't great editing files, even when that's the source codec. This video explains why. So why should we even use proxies? Proxies make editing easier. That means 4K, 6K, 8K, raw files, whatever, they're all easier to work with. Scrubbing will become much faster and thumbnails in bins load faster. When your computer works faster, you edit faster. Okay, so there are two ways that I typically make proxy files when I'm editing in Premiere Pro, and it really depends on which workflow that I need for that given project. The first way is to use Premiere Pro itself, and the other way is to use Hedge Edit Ready. Now, I'm going to talk about both of these, but first, let's jump into Premiere Pro and see how that works. Here we are in Premiere Pro, and I have my footage broken up into two bins, and it's basically separated by 4K versus Ultra HD footage, and that's separated because of their different aspect ratios. Now, the way that we make our proxies is we go in here and we'll grab our clips. Let's first start with our 16 by 9 aspect ratio clips, and I'm going to right click after selecting them, go to proxy and say create proxies. And what's going to pop up is this little box and we can choose format. I always recommend using QuickTime and then Premiere has some built in presets already in here that you can use right off the bat. But I have two custom presets that I prefer to use. So in this case, because these are 16 by 9 clips, I'm going to change my proxies into 1920 by 1080. And then I'm going to choose my render destination. I can either send this to the original media or I can choose where I want them to go. And that's my preference. So what I like to do is come in here go to my project folder, and in my footage folder, I have a proxies folder that I send all of my proxies to. Sometimes if it gets super dense with the amount of proxies I'm using, I will break them up into the number of cameras that I have. But for just two cams, we don't need that. So let's go to select folder and say, okay, great. And now what it's gonna do is start to send all these clips into Media Composer. All right, now it's done creating those proxy jobs. We're gonna go grab our 4K clips and do the same thing with a slight difference. So we're going to go here and say create proxies. And this time for the preset, we're going to choose ProRes Proxy 2048 by 1080 because that is exactly half of the 496 2160 frame size that these 4K files have. And again, it's going to take all of our proxies and send them over to Media Encoder. And as you can see, the proxy jobs are already running all by themselves. Now, while Media Encoder works, let's talk about a couple of things that are important to remember when you're working with proxies in Premiere Pro. The proxies always have to have the same number of audio channels as the original files. If you mix them down into a stereo mix from an eight track audio file, the proxies will not work in Premiere. So always keep the audio tracks the exact same. You might also be wondering why we had to split up the two different proxy setting aspect ratios. If you use an aspect ratio that does not match up to the source footage, what Premiere Pro is gonna do is either stretch, zoom in, or add black bars to that footage, which causes all kinds of issues once you start editing with that and adding any sort of motion effects. Okay, so that just wrapped up. Let's jump back into Premiere and let's grab just these clips and we'll throw them into our timeline. And what you're gonna see is now all these clips have this gray little box, but if I come up here to toggle proxies and if you don't have this button, you can add it by clicking on the plus icon and then looking in the button editor for the toggle proxies button. So we hit the toggle proxies, and if you see this blue square, this essentially says you are now editing with proxies. The other thing that I want to show you when you're working with proxies inside Premiere is let's say you need to detach them for some reason. In order to do that, it's super simple. You grab them, right click, say proxy, detach. Okay, so that covers the basics of proxies inside of Premiere Pro. Now let's talk about how we make them using another program like Hedge Edit Ready. What's great about Hedge Edit Ready is it is a super simple transcoding application. And as you can see, it's kind of drag and drop. All we're going to do is go into our finder, grab our camera folders, 
go back into hedge and drop them in. And it finds all the footage automatically. This even works with red files and all other sorts of segmented file types. It puts them together and it knows how to treat their metadata. It's pretty fantastic because it's very hands off. The next thing that you'll want to do is choose your preset. Now, again, it comes with a ton of baked in presets that will work for a lot of different options. I personally have my own personal preference that I built myself. So that's this 1080p proxies preset where I have a video format of Apple ProRes 422 proxy. The audio format is uncompressed PCM. And what's cool about this is it passes through the audio channels, but makes them uncompressed PCM. So if you have eight audio tracks on your source file, you will end up with eight audio tracks on your proxy file. And that's good because that is exactly what Premiere Pro is expecting. The other thing that we change inside of Edit Ready is we add an addition to the file name that is underscore proxy. This lets Premiere Pro know that the files that it's looking at are indeed proxy files. The last thing that we do is we add some additional options for frame resizing so that they'll end up as 1920 by 1080 and they'll scale using a source aspect ratio, which means that we only have to use one preset and it will automatically change the frame size so that the aspect ratio is correct. Pretty cool. All right, let's hit convert and let that rip. Something else that's pretty fantastic about Edit Ready is it is extremely fast. So let's jump back into Premiere Pro. This time I'm gonna grab all of my clips. We don't have to do them in individual sections and I'm going to go to proxy, attach proxies. In here, I will select attach and we're gonna to go to export proxy. And up here, I'm gonna look for the 19009 file, which is right there and say, okay. And Premiere Pro is gonna automatically relink to everything. And again, if I drag in these files, you'll see that they have their proxies attached. And that is the basics of making proxies inside and outside of Premiere Pro. In short, proxy files makes the editing process faster and smoother. So you need to use them. Go forth and make some proxies.